All right, we'll continue our NCAA Knoxville Regional Game 2 News Conference with Tennessee head coach Tony Vitello, pitcher A.J. Causey, and third baseman Billy Amick. Coach will make an opening statement, and then we will go into questions. Please raise your hand, and we will get a mic to you. Coach? Yeah, I don't have anything special. The guys played pretty good ball tonight. Um, and then also I think they handled, you know, it's it's very unique when you start this tournament, no matter who you are, because of the set of circumstances are just different. It is on our home field, so that helps a little bit. They handled that stuff real well, and so it benefited them. And I think also they knew ahead of time that they were going to be in a real competitive game, uh, which it's good for us to get back on the field, compete. Obviously, we needed to rest a little bit after the tournament, uh, but the tournament served us well because the fire was hot. Other than us getting our butts kicked the first game, the fire was hot the entire time. And I think the guys, at least we tried to let them know to anticipate that being the case tonight uh, because of the lineup we were going to see in the starting pitcher. And, you know, it's good. It's good to be back in the middle of all this stuff because it's, it's too much downtime, maybe just for me. But uh, it's, it's good we get to write our own narrative and uh, less text messages and comments and me getting called Lou Holtz talking about their team and things like that. That's a real team. Uh, but there aren't any bad teams in the tournament. So I don't know what the scores were today, but I'm sure every favorite didn't win, and there'll be more chaos tomorrow. Um, this is chaos. It's very competitive, and everybody's dangerous. And now hopefully our fans, which some of them probably see 9-3, to three, uh, but people that know baseball know how dangerous that lineup is. And our hitters made their pitcher look not as good as he is because Gillis is a guy. So maybe I did have a lot to say. Question to start with Ben, Ben Ryan. Tony, what was going through your head there to go to AJ mid at bat there in the first inning and the fact that he was kind of thrown into the fire pretty quickly? Uh, I, I imagine he can speak to his, how quickly he had to get things going, but does that speak to how impressive of a performance it was? Yeah, it's not really where my head should be, but my thought was all those people can KMA because it's they showed you what they're capable of doing right away and every inning matters. We're trying to win the inning. We end up not scoring in the first inning, but they're up one. We want to keep it at one instead of two. And if, if you ask me now that the game's over, what's your ideal evening for Stamos? It's, well, replicate what he did in Hoover, where we take him out early. He, could have, he was throwing well enough. He could have still stayed in the game, regardless of what inning that is. But in that particular instance, we felt like the best thing for us, um, you know, was cause. And he's, he's ready and willing at all times. And on a normal Friday or game one or the way we've used these two guys together, we would burn both of them. Um, we made the switch so early. The one benefit is you get Stom back and we're in a tournament. Um, that was Kirby's last hitter, which I'm sure that would have been. An, uh, no one wants Kirby out of the game. Um, so we're in a tournament and it'll help that we, we've got Stom, you know, back ready for whatever role is necessary. How significant was Kazi going as deep as he did, just given that this is the first game of the tournament? It was massive, and I think it's – well, it is. It's it's the the most pitches he's thrown in one game. And I think at the end, he was still pretty sharp. Um, you know, at least this time, we took him out in the dugout so he couldn't give me the sad face or try and fight me on the mound with it. But, no, in the tournament, everything and, – and, and Ben – and Clay were talking about it on the broadcast of the first game because we got that on up in the office. It's a tournament. So um, it's four teams, and every inning kind of has something to do with maybe the next. And so what he did for us was enormous. Back bracket there. AJ, a couple innings, you allow the leadoff man on or whatever, but you strand him at second, strand him at third. Well, what's the mindset for you tonight pitching with, uh, you know, having a leadoff man on base? Um, honestly, just – Nothing really changes. I just still try to make elite pitches, try to hit my spot pretty much. Other guys on third, first, nobody on. It never really changes for me. Tony, is A.J. Russell active this weekend, and what went into whatever decision was made with him? No, um, he, he's not active and um, probably uh, will get looked at again. We haven't fast-forwarded there, but just based off playing catch, there's no need to battle the soreness factor. Uh, step one and then step two would be, you know, make sure he's good to go and, and should be thrown at all. Um, so what he did for us on Sunday was great. Um, I think it was obvious, though, with his with his couple outings, he did give us um, that, that he hadn't really been what his best version of, of himself is since Texas Tech. So 
if anything, I think it alleviates the cloud of, for these guys too, not just him, but also us, what is, what isn't. So at least we're on one, one side of the fence or the other, and everyone knows we'd rather be fully on the other, but it, but at least there's some clarity there. So he, he won't be active. Is that going to be shut down for the rest of the season? He's going to get looked at, and, and we'll figure that out. Okay. So rest of the season could be tomorrow for everybody. <laughs> Billy, I guess there, there's you go out there and play third base in the first inning, and you don't. That's not the start y'all want to have, right? There's a leadoff homer, you're down one nothing. But then, the way that that inning ended, AJ comes in and shuts him down, and it seemed like the crowd was. It wasn't like a first inning crowd. It felt like it was late in the game. Can that get y'all going a little bit? So I guess that's not what you want, but it can get you going. I mean, we've we've been in plenty of situations this year where it's not maybe going the way we want it to, or you know, the crowd's not on our side. We. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really change our mindset towards the game, you know, our determination to get things done and just really do our job, whatever it is, whether it's get, you know, a guy over, get a guy in or get a ground ball, whatever it is, it's where you're going to treat it the same no matter what's going on. Um, Billy, after your three-run bomb in Hoover, Hunter Ensley mentioned that you're just a stud, so eventually it was going to happen. So for you to have that confidence there, the payoff, to finally see the hit show up in the box score and get another – you know, big home run here in this game. Kind of where are you confidence wise and just being able to see it happen again in such a big moment? Yeah, we've uh, we've all been swinging it well. And like V, so we uh, we had a really good approach going into this guy uh, starting today and he did have good stuff. And we just I think we did a really good job. And that's why that's what makes us so good um, where any guy can get you on any given day. So that's really what um, I'm most excited about personally, just the way our offense has been the last couple of weeks. Billy, what's in the bat against Causey like? Uh, not very fun. I think I almost popped my ACL last time I faced him. He can. It was raining, and he threw a fastball in. And I think I, uh, yeah, I was close to giving out. But no, it's not fun at all. Um, AJ, uh, according to the people who keep stats, I don't know uh, how far it goes back, but was it, it was your first career pickoff uh, at the collegiate level. Is it really? Yeah, that's. I'm asking you. It I'm might going have straight been. to the source. I actually I got to work with uh, Beam this weekend because you know his pickoff's phenomenal. I was trying to do exactly what he did, and so it was so funny. We were talking to the dugout afterward. He, I was like, finally, it was it was awesome. Yeah. Did you have one in high school? Maybe. I, I don't. But I definitely can't really first remember. in college. Probably my first in college. Yeah. More of a position player in high school. <laughs> I was more of a position player in high school. Tony, it, it looked like you know last week in Hoover up until Sunday that Billy was. Putting barrel on the ball and hitting it hard, the results just kind of weren't there. Last couple of bats, the results have been there. Have you seen any difference in Billy at the plate, or uh, is it just a, a matter of finding green grass? No, I mean I think he's at times comically the same guy every single day, um, for the most part, regardless of what's going on. And um, I, I think it took a while for Simo and Blake Burke to get to that point where they were like that as well. Yeah, uh, Ensley's kind of always been there, dryling, you know, just kind of – he's fiery, but he's – so now you've got a whole lump of them, um, you know, that I think provide that consistent approach, which I think was involved in, in one of Billy's answers. So um, it's it, – in this game, and heck, in high school, I remember, you know, my dad coached in high school, everybody knows that. Sitting on the bench watching those single elimination deals is just insanity, uh, which I think our high school, our, our state still does that. I don't want to misspeak now with all this stuff going through my head, but um, it's baseball. You need a good size, uh, a good sample size to determine really what's going on with a guy. And just because that sample size says this, it doesn't mean, I mean, M McClanahan threw as many strikes tonight as, as I think he has all year. I mean, he was outstanding. Um, so anything can happen on any given night. But if you're going to take a step back and judge where a guy is at as a player, to be fair, you're going to need a decent sample size to do so. Dan, Dan Kate. Tony, what stands out about Indiana? Um, well, I mean, at first, it's – again, you hear all these themes, and and I knew I was dreading people texting me about music. Um, all this stuff's going on, on all week, and I don't listen to it, but if it's loud enough, you hear, and people claiming that they're – you know, either they're not good or they shouldn't be in the tournament – is madness. So if you peel back the curtain, you got a team that had injuries early in the year that they had to overcome. Um, prior to those injuries, there was a lot of um, deserved hype behind the team.
a bunch of future big leaguers on the team, you know. Um, and then they've got a pretty proud winning tradition, too. And we've talked about, um, you know, they've been here before, Wright State. I mean, they're a well-coached group. Um, so I think as they work through some issues, which we did, too, early in the year, they started to find themselves. And now they're the complete team. It just looks different than I bet they mapped out in August. It just looks different than it did, but they're a complete team. Um, gutsy, big time stuff effort they got out of their starter. Um, and then the lineup one through nine did damage throughout the day today. So, um, you know, the one categories, I think doubles was brought up, but a, a very well balanced team. AJ, on a night like tonight when Stamos doesn't have his best start, what do you tell him when you come in and get that ball from him? He was just like, I love you. I just really said, I love you too. That's about it. Yeah. He, he was heated and those, you know, you, you want the delicate balance. And sorry, I just, as on a personal note, these guys have been made it so fun for me because what you want is the guy that's getting pinch hit for to be absolutely furious because he wants to be in the box, but furious for two seconds and then recognize that I'm his teammate. I got a job to do. And then his teammates about to take a spot and we all are better off if that guy does well. So you might as well support him and give him some advice or good vibes or whatever it might be. And, there was a moment of, of madness out there, but it was a quick moment. And uh, his teammates helped him, and, and he did it too. Just That's why I love that guy being on our team, man, Stom. So you alluded to this kind of how, how the past, like, five or six days, it's kind of that longer layoff than, than you like. And how do you manage that week, both with the guys and with yourselves, kind of, kind of mentally, I guess, you know, knowing that it's a longer break than usual and then everything's on the line? Well, I, th I think they earned, um, you know, the Monday day off. And then I think the way we orchestrated, don't roll your eyes, Billy. I think we've mapped out a really good week, a good balance of work, but rest. And, you know, we explained to them stuff that was going on to prepare them, but we didn't, we didn't have like a two hour meeting or anything. Correct. So I think that part was, was maybe easier. It's just who, who's going to write your narrative. And, um, and I've, I've met with a couple guys in the office and I don't know that it had any benefit, but at the very least, it gave me peace of mind because instead of sitting back and being frustrated, I we we addressed some things that were out there with a couple guys. Long story short, and and that's again the maturity and the leadership on this team. I assume they're writing their own narrative because again, Lou Holtz. Well, these are all it is is this team. Um, hey, the horizon, much respect. That ain't ever going anywhere for us. And then they had to win the league, so. And then we're talking about a team that we're not even playing tomorrow. Um, there's a great chance we could play them. Um, you know, they picked up right where they left off with last year and Southern Miss and who I'm talking about. But it's just there's a lot of narratives these days with these kids with their phones and, and free time and interviews, which is great. They're getting attention. But which one do you want to write or which one do you want to pay attention to, I think, is important. So that's where my frustration comes in. Billy, what did you see from Dylan and Hunter with their home runs and just – how significant was were those home runs to, to add some insurance runs throughout the game? Yeah, those two have uh, they've always seemed to come up in big spots like Hunt and you know South Carolina and Dill the whole year. I don't know if I can think of a specific one other than today, but no, those two guys have always you know stayed steady every day and um, consistent, and they're very valuable pieces to our lineup as you guys can see. So, did you think that you got all of yours? Three hundred ninety-one feet flat. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I got out, so I know. <laughs> Strong dude. AJ, what's been the biggest difference for you uh, once the role was changed after Georgia and Auburn? Uh, the strike to walk's been crazy. You've only allowed 14 earned runs in 44 and a third since then, counting tonight. What's been the biggest difference there for you? Honestly, my focus, what I was trying to do when I was on the mound, I went from just trying to throw strikes to trying to execute like elite pitches on the black. That's honestly the only thing I could tell you that has changed mentally about it. All right. Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah.